Hey, and welcome back. So for about the zillionth time, I've gotten into the van and found that the GPS has fallen off of the windshield. And as much fun as it is to use your own saliva as an adhesive, it's time to change this. The transit van has a very long windshield, so it's kind of difficult to reach the GPS regardless of where it's located at. And if you're driving into the sunset and you need to use the GPS, well, that's a problem too. Putting it further down on the windshield just makes it harder to reach and creates a blind spot. So I want to get it to where I can see it very easily, but it's not blocking my field of view and I can reach it. This pocket is a phone holder despite the fact that you can't find it in the Ford owner's manual. And while it fits an iPhone 8, an iPhone 8 Plus, which is my primary phone, will not fit. I'd like my phone to be in a landscape orientation more like this. And while I've been getting away with doing this as an alternate method of navigation on occasion as the Garmin is not always up to date, that just doesn't work. So what else can you use the cell phone pocket for? Well, I can tell you this, don't drop your music drive down inside because you'll never get it back. I suppose if you're still using one of these, well, it might work okay for you. And what about something else, like something to write with? Well, that's not going to work either. Hey, business cards. That's what it's good for. This area of the dash is quite thick and is even stronger given the fact that it's got a rib all the way around the perimeter of it. Even though the lip is a little bit small around the edge, I think I can still make it work. That's a really weird shape. And there's just no way to trace that from the back side of the dash. There's no room. Fortunately, I get pretty close on the first go with the paper template. It is too small, but I'm going to go ahead and translate that to a piece of hardboard and fine-tune the shape. I'm getting closer, but the additional thickness of that quarter inch aluminum is going to tighten up inside the hole a little bit, so I still have a little fine tuning to do on the shape and the size. I pulled the shifter trim ring off so I can get my finger behind the bracket. And I've got a really snug fit now, despite the fact that I missed on the corner a little bit there. There is no movement horizontally or vertically. It'll just hold itself in place. There you can see the progress that I've made. And while I could make it one more time to get that corner in, I think that's good enough as I've got a really good engagement into the dash. This is a really good technique for making a paper template if you have a seam that you can get an impression from. Once you've got the initial shape, you just cut that out, do it one more time, fold over the edge, and you get a nice, crisp, clean line. It's really difficult to get a line that clean using any other technique that I've found anyways.
still a little bit off on the point, but I'll leave some extra material so I can fine tune that shape on the hardboard template. I actually don't use this laser very often, but it's very handy for lining up to an odd angle like this on a workpiece. Hardboard is a great template material as it's very easy to cut and shape. It literally takes minutes to make a shape like that. Can you see the problem? That's a problem. Almost ran out of room there on the bandsaw. Despite the odd shape, I got that one dialed in pretty easily. The die grinder does a great job of roughing it in, but it makes it hard to see the bandsaw marks, and so this is the final cleanup is just by hand. Believe it or not, this is really fast on a flat, straight surface like that. It takes less than a minute once you've got it down to the stage that I had it at with the die grinder. Curves can be a little bit more of a challenge, and here I'm using a foam-backed uh, DA pad with a PSA paper to get it dialed in. All right, I know, I know, I know, I know. So I'm just using what I have available to me, and I did have to move the piece of plate back and forth over the piece of pipe a few times in different positions to get the curve that I was looking for. And if you overshoot, you can just put it in the vise and flex it back a little bit. I got a pretty good curve using the piece of pipe, but once that curve was in there, it's hard to do anything else in the other direction as that's like a compound curve. So this is the best that I could come up with. That's a problem, obviously. Maybe you can figure out how to fix it if you make one. I got a really good fit despite using the F wrench method. It doesn't wiggle around, it doesn't tip over, and all the seams are flushed out around the edge with the exception of the bottom which lines up to the shifter console. So not a big deal, it's kind of hidden. I don't like the fact that it's got that little kink there, but again I'm just using the tools that I have. I want to use just one quarter twenty bolt to mount this together with, and I want it to be centered on the opening, not on the bracket.
Since I'm measuring from the scribe line and not from the edge, I'm doing it from both sides so I get a better approximation of center. Once I get the vertical location, I'm just using the still rule as a guide so I can get a measurement from side to side. I didn't quite get the center mark where I wanted it to be at. With a snap punch, you can just angle the punch in the direction that you want to move the mark and you can just hit it again until you get it exactly where you want it to be at. On the lathe I cut the head off of a quarter 20 screw and put a point on it so that I have a transfer screw. I just keep changing the height of it until I get it to barely touch the bottom of the plate and it'll leave a mark so that I know where to drill the hole at. All you anti-glove guys love this. Normally you would use four smaller screws to do something like this 1032s or something i think because of the fact that it's indexed on the right against the curve and against the shifter on the bottom and the curve across the dash it's located very well there's no movement it's not going anywhere Fortunately, Garmin left me an index hole in the center there so that I can drill and tap that. And of course, I can't clamp it in a vise, so I got to do that freehand because it's tapered. And I cut it a little bit long so that I could sand it down and get a nice uh, flush fit on the bottom. Really happy with these new WNMG inserts that I got. Not so happy with the seller I got them from on eBay. I can't believe in this day and age people still try to play the game with you instead of just being straightforward. Anyways, enough of that. I'm running a little bit slow here, which these inserts don't seem to mind, just so that I don't get too shiny of a surface finish, as I don't want to have any glare issues in the van. Definitely too much stick out on this setup as you can hear, so I just took it easy. I'm making a pad for the piece that I cut off of the Garmin mount to index to so it won't rotate and I can just mount it with one bolt and this end mill nearly broke. The shaft that you just saw me make was based off of these prototype blocks of wood. It's a really fast, easy way to figure out what's going on. And this is before final finishing. It's still a little bit rough. I still have a little more work to do before final assembly.
I didn't make a prototype for the phone mount. I just went straight to a block of aluminum and made something. The surface finish inside is actually too good. I need to rough it up with a piece of 80 grit, but despite that, the phone doesn't move while I'm going down the road and it doesn't have anything uh, holding it in place, so it kind of surprised me. Although, I need to change the shape of it a little bit. You can see the angle is a little bit weird, so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I need to put a taper into it or something. I'm not sure. You got any ideas? Let me know. But I didn't need to add a clip or anything to it. It doesn't move and I'm driving a little bit rougher than what I normally would do just to see if anything moves and nothing moved. It's all very stable with just one screw. A taper on that shaft would look nice. I still have a few things that I need to do to finish this project up, which I'll do off camera and I'll show in a future video. There are two auxiliary switch block off plates on the dashboard. One of them is for the defogger, which I don't have, so the wiring harness is there for it, but the one at the top is empty, so I can just drill that out and mount a switch and eliminate using the cigarette lighter plug. These are high quality switches, and if you go back and look at the piece of paper, you can see the seller I got it from on eBay. They're 16 millimeters. They're the same as the ones that I purchased for the milling machine and the lathe. They're just 19 millimeter instead of 16. Hey, thanks for watching.